Hey guys, I hope you're ready for an it's epic. It's not ready yet. Oh. Freya, how long will it take to get the CGI ready for video 9? 73 hours and 26 <sighs> minutes. Oh, that's too long. What else do we have for this video? You were asked to do a terminology video. Let me get my book. Can you get some tunes? Something fun. How's this? Perfect. Where are you? Aha! Terminology, 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 terminology. Up there. This one's for you. Let's start with fencing, because everybody knows fencing. But did you know there's three weapon categories? There's the foil, which is lightweight and fast, like a needle. And the foil has a rectangular blade cross section. There's the epée, which is similar to the foil, with a stiffer blade and a triangular blade cross section. Now there's a lot more differences between those two, but this is just a quick once over. Both weapons will usually have a French grip or a pistol grip. And then there's the fencing saber which is pretty much like a cavalry sword, but with a thinner, straighter blade. And objectively, this is the fastest combat sport in modern history. And fencing is fought on a piste, or a strip, which is the playing area. But that's mainstream. What about the stuff we like? Let's jump to Hema. This is one of the most common forms and stands for historical European martial arts. And it can also be called historical fencing. This covers a wide range of weapons and styles, from sword and buckler in I-33, or 133, pronunciation is debatable which is taken from the oldest known manuscript on sword fighting techniques. To small sword from the Baroque period, to English single stick from the late 19th century, German longsword by Johannes Lichtenhauer from the late 14th century, to a variety of weapons by George Silver. The list is extensive. Hema can also be called HES or H-E-S, which is historical European swordsmanship, and sometimes WMA, which is Western martial arts. But that term is used in a bit more of a broader sense, with a few other styles like HMB or historical medieval battles, this is the hardcore, full-strength combat using super heavy-duty plate armor, and has been gaining a lot of popularity over the last decade, most notably in a tournament called Botan, or Battle of the Nations, held yearly in a variety of host cities, usually with awesome medieval settings. In this tournament, teams represent their countries ranging from 8 to 50 combatants per team, with 25,000 people attending annually. It's like a real Warhammer army. The battle categories for Botan are a duel, with a variety of weapons. The pro fight, which is kind of like a duel, but some different rules, which I'll cover more in a special video. The 5v5, the 30v30, the 12v12, and the 150 versus 150 team fights, and many more. HMB can also be called Bohurt, which is from a French word meaning wallop. And it has similar rules. There's also other derivatives of this, like night fight and M1 medieval. Then there's reenactment, which usually falls into five categories. Classical and ancient, Dark Ages, Medieval Crusader period, and then High Medieval Renaissance, or Renaissance. But Freya, how do you pronounce that without an Aussie accent? Either pronunciation is fine, but I like to say Renaissance, if that helps. Hey, Nate, I've been at this for a few hours. Can I take a break? Sure, you don't need to ask. Go stretch your circuits. Thanks! Hey, uh, while you're up, can you check the comments to see if we've got any winners? Sure thing! Oh my god! Ilya thinks I'm amazing! Space Rogue says I need a sword. Can I get a sword? Sure. Hi Nova Mac! Ah, oh, Salis, thank you! Sheldon Thorne, hi! Uh, wow! Looking good! Hi, Trackstar Omega! Hi, Yusuf Abdiazen! No, you rock, Black Condor! Hi, Vana Wendy! Yes, you can, and absolutely I do. Freya, I really should get back to the video. Sure, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, hi everyone. Oh, you have channels. I'm going to watch so many videos. As well as modern reenactment, that's usually based around gunpowder and doesn't really cover a lot of swords. And one of the big things with swords and other weapons in reenactment is they are blunt and heavier grade than HEMA, but not as heavy grade as HMB. These guys usually form the heart of renaissance fairs and medieval festivals. And they don't just bring swords, but a swathe of historical tents and equipment and static and interactive displays for oohs and ahs of the crowd. And another big term is HA, or historical accuracy. And then there's the SCA, or Society of Creative Anachronisms, which is similar to reenactment, 
but it's one really big group of over 30,000 members spread over 20 regions across the globe. Now, the anachronism part is important here, because in reenactment the focus is on recreating history as it was, but in the SCA, there's a little room for artistic licensing. Like I've been to events where I've seen a knight in full combat, full gear, fighting in a hot rod tabard. It was kind of awesome. And people can rank up to royalty, which is not quite accurate. Swordwise, they have armoured combat. Usually they use rattan, wrapped in foam, wrapped in duct tape. And they also use rapiers, obviously blunts. And more common than reenactment is combat archery and siege combat, all of it with soft ammo. Plus their feasts are amazing, from the food to the atmosphere to the theatrics. And speaking of theatrics, there's LARP, or live action roleplay. Not every form of LARP uses swords, but for those that do, there are some common terms. A boffer, or a foam weapon, also used in other forms of combat, like HMB soft. HP and LP, or hit points and life points. Weapons do X damage in LARP depending on the weapon. And like in Dungeons and Dragons, you can only take so many hits based on your hit points or life points. And finally, there's one word, or two words, that every form of sword fighting does, which is hold or stop. A little habit that I've picked up that I'd like for you guys to do is when you hear the word hold or stop, do three things. And I want you to drill them so this becomes automatic. First thing is stop on a dime, even if it's mid-strike. The second one is recall it loudly because just because the word hold was called doesn't mean everybody heard it. And the third thing is check. Check to see if you need to give space or you need to give assistance. Because if the word stop or hold is called, usually there's a damn good reason. Now, there's a lot I missed in each category, as this was just a quick overview. And there's a lot of categories I missed, like pre-enactment or sci-fi sword fighting, jugger, which is sports-based and uses boffers, and sword fitness, which is not concentrated around combat, just fitness as well as a host of other styles and terminology therein. But we'll cover that at another time because I've really got to let Freya process the CGI for the next video. So, till next time, train safe and stay sword savvy. And before I end the video, I want to give a very special shout out to you LARP, to Bohurt Tech, and a shout out to Adaria for letting me use their LARP for HMB for and HEMA footage. And as a special note to Adaria, these are the guys that are doing the fight choreography for Shadowversity's movie Shadow of the Conqueror. There's still two weeks to go on the Kickstarter, so if you can, head over there, help support the project. I'll thank you for it, Shad will thank you for it, everybody working on the project will thank you for it, and when the project is done, the sword community will thank you for it too. This project is going to be amazing. Okay Freya, how much longer? 94 hours and 12 minutes. What? That's more than last time. Well, that was a lot of graphics and music. I really need to get you more RAM. You really do.